This is the FET Colorado Molecular Shape Simulation. And first you see that we have the link here and that you can click on, students can click on this. There's part one that walks them through questions of electron domains. Notice uh, questions one through seven. And then they have part two, drawing molecules to show three dimensionality and that explicitly shows them how to do a line is the plane of the paper, a wedge is coming forward, and a dash is of the drawings. This is just a good practice of best way to draw a structure. Then of course it has on question nine, uh, drawing of the shape, the electron geometry, and the bond angles. Don't forget that molecular geometry chart that I showed you earlier. Then in 10, you will go to the model screen with the five atoms and then you prediction. So there's your prediction. 11, then you have to go through the molecular geometry to predict first what's going to happen in an unshared pair and question uh, two unshared, three and four unshared pairs. And then there's some blank pages so they can draw if you give this to them electronically. Part three has the model versus the real molecules, which is pretty cool because they can go through the, the models and then they go through the real models. So if you notice, there's a series of questions and then of course, here's the exercises that they'll go through and answer the questions on. And then there's a challenge question. This is pretty intense for them to do and there's up to part D on this. Now, I've walked you through, I'm scrolling really quickly to get back up to the top, of the entire piece here of how to incorporate uh, molecular shapes. And it's broken into three models. So depending upon your students' needs, depending upon how much intervention that you need to do prior to this lesson, um, this is typically going to be, it is an engage lesson, but more importantly, it's an explore and explain an elaborate lesson for them so that you can also do some informal assessment as you're walking around um, monitoring them. I would do this in partner pairs or even in table teams so that they can kind of come together so have them work together on walking through those questions. Now I prefer partner pairs but depending upon your class size and time frame you may want to do table teams of no more than four students. So let me click on the link for you to walk you through what the students will see. So here's your FET Colorado um, simulation page. It takes you right to the simulation. Remember it's for a HTML5 that is compatible with Chromebooks. So then they're going to walk through the models first. So if you notice with these icons, we'll pause it here for a minute. So here's what the students see when they're on the model series. Notice have them check molecular geometry, electron geometry. This is to compare and contrast the electron domains. So as they go through, and I would also have them show bond angles. So see they're practicing looking at their molecular geometry, their electron geometry, and of course, what is the bond angle at that moment? Of course, you can add more. So as they start adding, notice, now on the simulation, it's called a lone pair. However, better terminology for future classes of such as AP chemistry, it's better to call it an unbonded or unshared pair because that insinuates that that is a potential bonding site for future um, other molecules to attach or future other electrons to become um, attached to the molecule to create another bond. Next, I'm going to walk you through what happens when they get to the real molecule phase. So now we're in part three of our molecular shape FET simulation. Notice the tools are the same in terms of options of showing unshared pairs uh, slash lone pairs, the bond angles, make sure they're clicking on molecular geometry and electron geometry, and they can easily see. So here's the real version, the real model. Now, 
or the real version of the molecule, excuse me. And now here's the model. They're going to see here's the model. Notice the difference. Okay, so real. And they can rotate it around and it kind of changes the angles. But every time they rotate it, it always goes back to that accepted bond angle. If you click on the next structure, carbon dioxide, notice it has that linear structure. Huh, no unshared pairs. Here's the model. Here's the real. So the model version, remember, is in case you have a molecular um, model set, some of the colors are a little different, and that's why the colors of the diagram is a little different. So here's sulfur dioxide, excuse me, sulfur dioxide. Notice there's the real. Here's the model. So here's the real version kind of walks them through all of these funky structures that you can show them the various aspects that really walks them through that entire molecular geometry chart that I shared with you and the compare and contrast between a linear structure and a trigonal bipyramidal structure. And let me just show you another one. And of course it takes them to all the way to the octahedral. So, of course, over time, students are going to develop the principle that the molecular geometry and the electron geometry will always be the same when there are no unshared pairs found on the central atom. So that's kind of a, a main theme that most students get and develop in terms of going through these structures and being able to visualize. So again, right here, I just took um, bromine heptafluoride here and if you notice again here is an unshared pair and then down at the bottom molecular geometry is square pyramidal but the electron geometry is an octahedral because of that potential bonding site so they develop that claim with some evidence to prove it and then they can verify with some reasoning in terms of the electron domains the bond angles and how many unshared pairs are present. So that kind of walks them through this document that I'll go back and, and show you. So now as I've walked you through the simulation, let's go back to that part three. And if you notice again, the data table here where they have to show the molecule in terms of the difference in the bond angle versus real versus model. And then what do these molecules have in common? What trend are they observing? And then, of course, it gives them a simulation and it asks them uh, the questions based upon this diagram that they can make connections to with that real molecule of sulfur um, tetrafluoride here. And then it gets them into some practical exercise questions. And so these practical exercise questions and challenge questions would be for an and more of an evaluate section and that would be something that you can send home for homework for the individual student after doing the group work or partner pair group. So how do I incorporate this into the classroom setting is that, let me scroll back up, model one, part one, the electron domains, the students can get through that in a day and model two in a period, in a 50 minute period. Now. Some of your lower level students or slower students may not complete model two, but that's okay. Let them have time the next day. Then they'll come in and do part three, comparing their model, the real models, molecules. And then as an assessment piece, ha have them do those challenge questions for homework. So the lower level learners can also have those hand tangible models to use as i mentioned earlier in a previous lesson um, for them to be able to have and in the classroom you can get those from your science and motion person or from flint this lesson incorporates again in an engage explain explore 
and elaborate section. And there's even an evaluation component that you can utilize with these as a bell ringer for the next day of your lesson.